and let's check out this organizational method. What is up, Joe Crew? It is me, Joe Crew DMD, and I'm here today to teach you guys how to organize your Dragon Ball Super Card Game cards like a doctor, because I am a doctor. I'm a dentist, but a lot of people don't think dentists are doctors, but I can guarantee you that I do more surgery than your primary care physician. On that note, I'm gonna teach you guys how to organize all of your cards perfectly so you can find any card within 15 seconds. If this is your guys' first time here and you wanna see Shrippums and organization videos and deck profiles and Dragon Ball Super card game information on a weekly basis, make sure to smush that subscription button if you're a returning member of the Joe Crew. Thank you for coming by. I hope you guys enjoy this video and let's check out this organizational method. Method. So the first thing that we're going to need to talk about is the card code. Now every Dragon Ball Super card game card has a card code. It's right here in the bottom right hand corner. You can see that little, you can see this little spot right here. That is the card code. Now what the card code says will be something like BT-053C. Now what that means is that this card is from set one. It's number 53 in the set and it's a common. Card codes are extremely important when organizing these cards because that's how you're going to follow them away and that's how you're going to find them. So all of my cards I organize into binders. Here it is. This is my first binder I ever got. I love the art on it. I customize these at Inked Gaming. You can customize your binders. There's me with Goku and Vegeta in Japan posing like a, having a really good time in my Height of Mastery shirt there and my Awaken Power shorts. But that's besides the point. This binder is parallel foils from set three through set five. Now I always start with red, then it goes to blue, then it goes to green, then it goes to yellow, then it goes to black. And the reason why that sequence is is because the cards are always coded in each set, red, blue, green, yellow, black, always. And then multicolor come after that and secret rares will be at the end. But this is just all commons and I'll put multiple copies of cards and pages because these are all to play. I don't put them in sleeves because I play with these cards. The cards that are valuable, I put away in sleeves and other binders, but these are my play sets. So I like to have five copies of each card in a sleeve so that I can take four out if I need a play set and one stays as my placeholder so I know where that goes. Now set three through nine, it was a lot harder to collect parallel foil sets because a parallel foil didn't come in every pack. But once we had set 10, it became a lot easier to get full sets of parallel foils throughout the whole set. So the next binder I have here, this is set six through nine parallel foils. And as you can see, again it goes red blue green yellow black for every set and this is set seven it'll go into set eight here and then set nine will be right at the end here are the set nine cards and so on and so forth so that's basically how these cards are laid out these are parallel foils again i get these binders designed at ink gaming this is set 10 through set 13 and a half about but these were a lot easier to get all five. So every time I got all five, I would just fill the pages with my five for the play set and the placeholder. And these are the cards that I play with. So again, I don't care, care about keeping them in amazing condition because I'm gonna be playing with these cards. But this is basically what a full binder looks like. In every pocket of this binder, there is five copies of a card, unless they're in a deck and being played right now. Some of them I don't have five copies, I'll have like three but pretty much all of them, there's five copies in here and this gets up. This gets close to set 14. It's about set 13 and a half and then I've started another binder, but you guys get the idea of the parallel foil binders. So those are parallel foils from main block sets, set one through set 13, which is current set 14, we'll start getting added soon. Next binder to go over is rares. So this is the rare binder. This has rares from set one through current. All the rares in order, the same way they come out in the set. So if you go to dbs cardgame.com and you go to the card list and you just filter to rares this is the exact order of rares that you would see from the beginning of the game through the current set and the, it's five copies of each card per pocket and then excess go in boxes elsewhere but this is what i use to build decks and this is how i find cards most easily some of these are in decks some are spread between multiple decks so they're not all here and we're gonna get to the end of this soon so the next set will be soon after rares we have super rares so this is my super rare binder and here this is the same thing this is just srs from the first set through the most recent set uh, five copies of each card in a pocket and then the excess go into bulk boxes and those I use to trade or give to friends who want to build decks. 
So the next binder I want to show you guys is the Theme Booster binder. Now this is Theme Boosters. There were only three of them. They're basically the equivalent to what we have as draft boxes now, but for the very first kind of full expansions that we had that were not really called expansions, but full sets that came out, were called Theme Boosters and there were three of them. So this is Theme Booster 1, which is Tournament of Power. It's a very popular Theme Booster. Um, I do have all the cards in parallel foil it's something i made a point to collect because i think this set's really amazing and cool and i love it um so i have parallel foils from theme booster one parallel foils from theme booster two which was world martial arts tournament as you see it's red blue green yellow and i don't think there was much black in this set just one page and then theme booster three was clash of fakes and it's the same thing here but i do have the srs and the rares and the parallel foils together because there weren't quite as many cards in this set so i just put them all together and then this is my lovely page of just fun stuff so the next thing that kind of follows the theme of the theme booster is like i said is the draft boxes so this is draft box rares these are draft box rares and the first three draft boxes i believe or maybe draft box yeah these go up to draft box three which is the most recent draft box and then in the back starting from the back is where i collect parallel foils so i display all the parallel foils from one two and I believe draft box three didn't have parallel foils, but draft box two did have parallel foils. So I have some draft box two parallel foils in here. Uh, those were a little harder to collect, and I wasn't a really big fan of these dark parallel foils, so I didn't go crazy about collecting those. After the draft box rares, we have the draft box super rares. So here are SRs from draft box one, draft box two, draft box three and that brings us to current for those super rares i also put evolution booster in here because i believe evolution boosters are kind of going to be what follows draft boxes like we saw theme booster one two and three we saw draft box one two and three and i feel like we're going to see evolution booster one two and three um, and that's it for this binder. Oh, and in the back we have the uh, alternate draft box rare. So we have like the duo power rare from draft box one. We had the duo angel rare from draft box two. And draft box three, we had the giant force rares. So I'm sure evolution booster stuff will fill in the in between of this binder. The following up with draft boxes, we have evolution booster. So this is evolution booster, just parallel foils, five copies of each card. And it's in order, not just parallel foils but I also have the SRs in here, SRs and rares. So all copies of the cards are in this one. Uh, there's five copies per slot and the thing that will follow after this, I'm sure will be Evolution Booster 2 and probably Evolution Booster 3. And then I'm sure we'll see whatever the next rendition is after that. So this, after the Evolution Boosters, we have alternate arts, which we had some alternate arts in Evolution Booster, but we've also had alternate arts in the special anniversary boxes. So alternate arts starting from the beginning, and the way that I figure out how to organize these is I go to the DBS website, I look at the release schedule for the special anniversary boxes, and I put the cards in order, coordinating with the schedule. And it's usually the same thing, red, blue, green, yellow, black. So same concept, so special anniversary box one, two, and three hasn't come out yet, but in between three we had draft box alternate arts. So the draft box alternate arts are filling in those spaces, and then soon we will have special anniversary three, which will follow this up in here. Previously, we looked at theme boosters. The theme boosters actually had SPRs. The theme boosters from Tournament of Power are extremely valuable, so I have those locked away in a very safe place. But theme booster two and three also had SPRs, so this is my theme booster SPR binder. I'm hoping to see more SPRs in side sets like maybe Evolution Booster 2 or 3, or maybe after that they'll reintroduce having SPRs in these side block sets, which I personally really enjoy. But these are SPRs, and SPRs I don't stack multiples in sleeves because they're really beautiful, the art is really advanced, and the texture foiling patterns are really good, so I like to give them each their own sleeve. And then in this binder, I just have sleeved one copy of each card from Tournament of Power in order. Awakened Powers are put away in a very safe, uh, secure location, safety deposit box. So there is my theme booster SPRs and one copy of each foil from Tournament of Power. One of the more recent developments we had are the collector's selection. So this is my collector selection binder. I've started putting them in order here. I like to get a playset of each one. So this would be my collector selection playsets. 
and some of them are in decks right now but i hope that we're going to see more of these collector selections i think the second one was announced but that will continue to fill out this book and this book will be dedicated to collector selection play sets as you see in this binder they all get their own spot also because they're very advanced foiling patterns and of course what a lot of people want to see sprs so this book this is more of a display binder. I just have one copy of each SPR from the beginning of the game through current in order, just to observe and see, you know, the progression of the art, the progression of the SPRs, be able to compare them and appreciate the art for what it is. I love this binder. I spend time just looking at it and looking at the history of the SPRs. It's something that's really special to me, and I'm looking forward to the future of the SPR development in this game. We'll get back to more SPRs, but before we get to that, I wanna get in some other cards. This is my promos binder. My promos binder is basically promos one through current now there's a ton of promos and you can tell the promos by the card code again you can if you go on the dbs dash card game website you can filter cards by promo so you can look at the history of promos but this is basically all the promos through current same thing five copies per i try to keep them all parallel foils the excess promos that i have that are not parallel foil i keep in a bulk box and i use those to build decks for friends or to trade um, but these are all for my deck building purposes. There's a lot of world tournament stuff is out on loan right now to a friend. Um, but these are my parallel foil promos and it just makes it really easy to build whatever I want. So I know if I want something from the tournament pack two of Unison Warrior, I can just jump to this area and here it is. Here's my Vegetas, here's my little Babby Rollies. Here's my Fighting Against Fates. Uh, it's all there. This one is filling out so soon I'm gonna need to build a different binder for this to continue the promo binder. So this kind of lines up with the promos. This is my Capitan Falcon binder. Um, but this is merit cards in the front and then after merit cards i have tokens and after tokens i have a couple more merit cards and then winner arts so i keep all my winner arts in here these are the same they're more advanced foiling patterns they're really beautiful special cards but i like to give them all their own place in their own book so the next thing I want to talk about is expansions. Expansions, I think we have 18 expansions right now, but expansions get their own book here. So this is expansion one, uh, four copies of each parallel foil. Expansion two, same thing. Expansion three was the ultimate box. Expansion four and five came out together and those were the first time we saw like a smaller box with expansion cards in them that came with some parallel foils. Expansion six was the special anniversary cards for the first special anniversary box. Expansion seven and eight followed that. Uh, expansion nine was when they introduced surge leaders. And I believe it was expansion nine and expansion 10 were the two different surge leaders. Expansion 11 and 12 were when we first saw unisons. And then expansion 13 was special anniversary box two. So special anniversary box three should follow these next couple expansions wasn't too hype on these big expansions foils i mean they did give you all foils so that was nice but i like the shinier feel not just that wave printed over so special anniversary i imagine will be going here special anniversary box three to follow that so these are expansions along with expansions we also have starter decks starter decks have cards that are specific to starter decks so this is my binder where I keep parallel foil starter deck cards. If they don't have parallel foils, I'll keep some in there anyway. But these are starter decks one through current. Uh, it also has a expert decks, which they only have had, I think, three of them. But these have all the decks that came out in chronological order, parallel foil play sets so that I can build decks. And the new, I think it's starter deck 15 and 16 are gonna be getting the next couple pages and this binder will continue to develop. So now I know what you've all been waiting for, the SPR lock. Now, SPRs in this game are valuable. So I recommend keeping them in a safe place. These cards can amount to a significant lot. And if you are a big time collector, invest in a safe because a safe costs you about as much as a secret rare. Bolt it down in your house, bolt it down in your basement somewhere, get a fireproof, waterproof safe, you know, for water. So it's good to protect your investment in these cards, especially if you really like them and you wanna collect a lot of them. Definitely, definitely protect them and bolt your safe down. Put it in a safe place where people don't know where it is and lock everything away that you want to keep safely. So this is one of those things. This is my SPR binder, I keep play sets of SPRs set one through current, and I pull from here to build decks. I always like to have SPRs in my binders, so that's what I like to play with. And I just like each card to have its own page and it goes in its own sleeve. 
and these are really this is really my collection of this game as you guys probably know i don't sell cards i just collect them i love this game i think the cards are beautiful and i love to collect sprs so when the sprs are cheap i pick them up and i fill this binder i also think this card's gonna be crazy valuable i just stuck it in the last page here and a couple more sprs there and these are sprs set 10 through current so set 10 i keep my play sets whenever i build a deck i just pull my sprs out of here and i will always get uh, my playset together and then just collect them and this binder is filling up so set 14 I think is going to be the beginning of the next SPR binder as we're getting close to the end of this binder that brings us to current. And last but not least I have my secret rares but those are a secret and they're locked in a very very safe secret place that I do not tell anybody so as a pirate, I cannot show you my greatest treasure and it must stay locked away forever. But if you guys have secret rares, you should just put them in a really, really safe secret place. That's my recommendation to you. And when you need your secret rares, pull them out, put them in decks and have your spiciest card. But that has been the card organization video. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I tried to go through everything. If you have any questions, leave it in the comment section below. Uh, extra cards, extra commons. I keep them all in drawers. So I fill drawers with non-foil commons. And that way, if I ever want to build a deck or test something, I can just pull commons out or build common decks for friends. I usually keep 20 copies of each card in non-foil. Those go in drawers and they're all chronological from the beginning of the game to current. And then the side booster, like theme booster and draft box, those things, all those extra bulk, I keep those in boxes that you get either with the draft box or that you get with special anniversary. Those get put away. And then I also keep non-foil promotion cards and extra rares, extra SRs, all that stuff. I keep those all in boxes. And those are my cards that I trade with or give to friends that want to build decks or stuff like that. So that's my video. I think this is the most efficient way to organize cards. I'm able to build pretty much any deck that I want if I have the list within about 10 or 15 minutes. It's really easy for me to put my cards away. I keep everything super organized and it really helps me build stuff faster, explore more decks, and be able to interact with more things within the game. I also recommend if you are somebody that likes to build a lot of decks, find a sleeve art that you really like and stick to it. Because if you have one sleeve art that you put all of your decks in, it's really easy to swap cards between decks. And some sleeves you can get are from your playmat. If you like Joku sleeves, there is a link in the description below. You can also just customize your own, but there are some Joku DMD sleeves on your playmat. Feel free to buy as many as you want. It does actually help me out. But if you want to design your own, totally go design your own. There's a 10% discount code down there. And using sleeves that are cohesive between all your decks makes it really easy to switch cards between decks. I'm Joku DMD. I hope you guys enjoyed this video on how to organize your cards like a doctor. And I am a doctor and I can't end the episode without doing a dental tooth tip. So my dental tooth tip of the day today would be to you guys and girls, make sure to be getting your teeth clean professionally. You can do a lot at home if you have a powered toothbrush and you're flossing every day, you're taking great care of your teeth. You can definitely do a lot to take great care of your teeth, but it's important to get your teeth clean professionally as well. Go in, get your cleanings anywhere from two to four times a year, depending on what kind of patient you are, the needs that you have, and the predispositions that you may be predisposed to. If you are in the tri-state area, feel free to come by Dental, and I would be more than happy to give you an exam and talk to you about your dental hygiene and maybe talk about Dragon Ball cards a little bit. I'm Joku DMD, and I will see you guys next time. さて、もっと中の入って。最後、最後締め。おお、ノーウェイ。オーマイゴッド。<笑><笑>